we we were discussing it while we were out there. It's it's sort of that age group from sort of five to about twelve. There seems to be a huge number of those children that are quite severely injured. So they have in, you know over forty percent burns, loss of limb, facial injuries. And one of the theories behind it is that the under fives are often picked up by their parents and shielded, or somebody grabs them and runs with them, and the over 12s are pretty quick, so they can get themselves out of a situation and run away. So that age group from 5 to 12 is just unable to defend themselves, and that's why we see so many of them. Yes, gentlemen up there. Hi, yeah. Thank you guys all so much, and Richard for the work on the documentary. Um, Victoria, as of today, I was just checking, the death toll in Lebanon has surpassed 2,000 people. And so, so far we've seen people like Dr. Hassan Abusitta go back there to help out as well. Do you see yourself uh, going there sometime soon? And does the health community fear a similar devastation to the one we've seen in Gaza so far? Um, I, I think that going to help out in Lebanon has definitely been an option for a lot of the UK medics. One of the reasons why so few UK medics have gone to Gaza since the Rafah border closed is due to the restrictions that COGAP put out, saying that you, if you were part of an emergency medical team, you have to deploy for a minimum time of a month. And that's very difficult for a lot of useful doctors in the UK who are actually working in the NHS and carrying out sort of trauma care. They all have jobs. It's so hard to take a month out. Um, it, ex it will exceed your annual leave. Um, you're talking about taking unpaid leave. That's at the discretion of your employer. So that has cut our volunteers at Ideals. I, we basically had on our books um, in February 105 people that were prepared to deploy. And by May, it was just myself and Graham. And that was just through circumstances that I was changing jobs and Graham is semi-retired, so we could go. But, but nobody else could get the leave agreed for a month. Do you think that's intentional? No, I, I don't think... I, well, I think, I think that it's intentional that Kogat have said you have to go in for a month. Yes, I do think that's intentional. Just as I think that they've said you can't return if you're... Palestinian, because a huge number of emergency medical teams at the moment consisted of Palestinians from some form or, or another. Most of the Palestinian doctors I know around the world came out to support Gaza and were there in the December, the January, the February, and then suddenly they couldn't get back in. And th this is what happened to Ghassan, it happened to Ahmed Mokhalalati, it's happened to so many prominent surgeons that they've just been excluded. So yeah, I think that was purpose. It's a, it's a, it, again, I think it's on purpose that you can't, you can't go unless you can secure a guest house for your team. You have to have a driver 24 hours. You have to have an evacuation plan. You have to have satellite phone. You have to have a Garmin. Uh, you're only allowed to take one suitcase with you. It has to weigh 23 kilograms. You're not allowed to take more than one phone, more than one laptop. You know, they go through your, your belongings and they're expecting you to take water for three days because you have to support yourselves. So uh, all of this has been designed to stop doctors going. So just to be clear, who is it that's drawing up those rules? COGAT. Which is who, sorry? Israel. <laughs> That's what I mean. All right. That makes sense. Okay, well, listen, thank you. I'm afraid that's all we've got time.